So let's start with a, a deep breath. Would you breathe with me? Breathe in and breathe out. And now make it a prayer as, as you breathe in, breathe in the Spirit of God. Invite in the Spirit of God, God's goodness and grace, love, joy, peace, life. And breathe out, and as you breathe out, let go of, of everything else. Breathe out your fear, your sin, your anxiety, your insecurity. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's pray together. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for this time that we have together, and we ask that you would open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our minds. You would pour out your Spirit on us. That you would fill us. Shape us to be the people that you want us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we're continuing our reflection on the Apostles' Creed, I invite you to, to say it with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Jesus. There's a, a name that gets tossed around an awful lot by all kinds of people, right? In worship, in prayer, in, in anger, in grief, in, in fear, when we don't know what else to say. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus was a, a fairly common name in his day. Yeshua, Joshua, meaning God saves, God rescues, often used as, as a cry for help, Jesus. And Christ, Christ isn't his last name. It's, it's not a name at all, it's, it's, a, it's a title. Christos, translating the Hebrew Messiah, meaning anointed, an anointed person. Priests were anointed, so were kings. I believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gets by far the biggest section of the creed, which, which makes sense. I mean, after all, we call ourselves Christians. It's kind of a, a make-or-break section, the, the heart, the, the crux of the matter, the core, the, the, the center of everything, the way, the truth, life, Jesus says. He, you search the scriptures thinking that you'll find eternal life, he says in the Gospel of John. But they're about me. They point to me. They testify on my behalf. At the name of Jesus, Philippians says, Every knee will bend, heaven, earth, under the earth, every tongue confess, Jesus is Lord. Who, who is Jesus to you, what, what do you make of Jesus? Reminds me of Jesus at Caesarea Philippi, a Roman city filled with, with altars and temples to all kinds of gods. And he's got his disciples around him and he, he asks them, who do the people say that I am? Who do they say that I am? And he gets all kinds of answers. A prophet, Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist back from the dead still gets all kinds of answers. Friend, savior, teacher, philosopher, dreamer, visionary, nice guy, maybe a little bit delusional. Then he asks them, but, but who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus to you? At, at Caesarea Philippi, uh, Peter speaks up, often the first apostle to, to say something. And he says, you're, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And, and here we are, 
saying the same thing. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, son of the Father Almighty, the, the creator, maker of, of everything. Now here's where language really hits its limits. When we, we say son, we don't mean son in the sense that I have a son or that I am a son, but, but one co-eternal, consubstantial to use the church's language. The creed tries to get at this by saying only son. The Nicene Creed adds begotten, not made. We'll touch more on it in the weeks ahead. But, but know this. So here's, here's an example of its importance, though. St. Nicholas of, of Myra, the Bishop of, of Myra, who we call Santa Claus nowadays, he once slapped a man for, for calling Jesus a son, but not equal with God the Father Almighty. Slap him. And that got him stripped of his title and thrown in, into prison. Because that's not a way a Christian, much less a bishop, should act. But he was that passionate about it. That, that's, that's how much it, it meant. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. Our Lord had the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Paul writes to the people of Philippi, not the same, not Caesarea Philippi, a different Philippi across the sea. Have the same mind, Lord. In, in some ways, I think to be honest that th this is more difficult for, for most of us than, than only son. Not difficult in, in the sense that it's difficult to understand, but difficult, hard to, to practice. It asks something of us. Uh, to paraphrase Soren Kierkegaard, a, a Danish philosopher, he says that, that most objections against Christianity don't really stem from, from doubt. They have their source in insubordination, in a rebellion against authority, in a... a a dislike for obedience. We don't like to be told what to do or how to live. And that's what a Lord does. Have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Think his thoughts. See from, from his perspective. Value what he values. Make his priorities your priorities. Act as he acts. Live as he lives. That's what it means to, to have a Lord. In, in Nazi Germany, Martin Niemöller once preached a sermon, Christ is my Fuhrer, as a title that Hitler took for himself. And in fact, when he heard about this, he had Niemöller thrown into prison. It's no joke. Making Jesus Lord of, of our lives should make us different. Make us stick out, having his mind, seeking his priorities. Paul reminds us that, that Jesus had equal status with God, but didn't use that to his advantage, didn't, was humble, obedient, even to the point of death, death on, on a cross. I mean, most of us still use what we have for our own advantage, we're looking to gain prestige or, or power, gain wealth, taking all that we can, look out for ourselves, kind of tribalism, us against them sort of thing. That's how all those other lords, Lord Jesus says. But the Son of Man came not to, to be served, but to serve. This is how it should be among you. He came to give his life. He values compassion, gentleness, humility, kindness, patience. His main stance on, on sin is, is to forgive it. Love, love, love in all that we are and in all that we do, as it is all that Jesus is and in all that Jesus does. I like what was said of, of Francis of Assisi, St. Francis, just a couple of years after he died, said that Jesus was in his heart, Jesus in his eyes, Jesus in his mouth, 
Jesus in his hands, Jesus in his ears, Jesus in his whole body, his whole body given over to Jesus. That's what it is to have Jesus as Lord. Francis, who who gave up his inheritance to, to live with the poor and, and the lepers, to, to restore the church, to love, to be love for people. So this brings us sort of to a, to a crossroad, to, to decision time. Who is Jesus to you? What do you make of him? I believe in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord. Would you pray with me? Help us to have the mind of Christ, to make you the Lord of each and every one of our days, to seek your priorities, to value what you value, Lord, help us to be the people that you want us to be. We want to be the people that you want us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. May he protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he's shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again to our door. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.